The uh, Women's Club has agreed to moderate the candidates for us. Ms. Kelly Kino will be the moderator. She will be giving each candidate an opportunity to make an opening statement. We have expanded it to two minutes from one minute, but if it's 30 seconds, that works too. Uh, just because uh, there was some confusion on the time limits of that. She will ask each candidate one a question, the same question to everyone, with a one minute response, and then one minute closing from each candidate. Um, if uh, Ms. Daniels gets here before the end of the opening statements, we can give her the opportunity to make one. Otherwise, she just comes in when she comes in. And now, Ms. Kelly Tino. Hello. So, um, I'm going to um, be starting with the opening statements in just a moment. I just wanted to let everyone know that there will be no questions from the audience and there will be no comments um, from the audience. And um, please show each candidate respect. And our Sergeant at Arms, um, Carrie McLean. Carrie, want to raise your hand? Carrie, raise your hand. Raise your hand. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> um, we'll be monitoring the room for that. So, with no further ado, we will start with our two-minute um, opening statements. And we will start with Jackie Ayer. Okay. Oh, was this part of the test here? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Does this work? Can you hear me? Yes. No, okay, great. Acton faces a number of unique challenges in the future, which threaten both our historic property rights as well as our rural and equestrian lifestyle. These threats include proposed SEA and septic regulations, high-speed rail development, and development, de developer pressure that favors unfettered, freeway-oriented commercial projects. I believe that I can contribute substantially to the Active Town Council's efforts as it proceeds to deal with these and other issues that it faces. Um, Tom Costin. Hi, I'm Tom Costin. I've uh, lived in Acton for eight years. I'm raising my two children here. I have two lovely children, a boy and a girl. We've uh, contributed a lot to this community with the schools. I'm uh, a Cub Scout leader. And uh, we moved here from Burbank because we really just wanted to get rid of some of the uh, distractions of the city for our kids. And we look at Acton and say, wow, here's a beautiful community. It's close enough where you can commute and work. It's close enough to Palmdale, Los Angeles, but it's relatively untouched. And that's what drew us here in the first place. So after living here eight years, uh, you realize that there is a lot of work to keep acting unique like it is. And there's several threats that came to my attention recently, almost smacked in the side of the head. And what is the, uh, the, the SEA enlargement, where it's gonna get used to take about a third of acting. The high-speed rail, which will run through Acton, which will be terrible for anybody's property value and the peace of mind. And commercial expansion. I think we have a nice balance the way it is now. So my plan for the council would be to uh, open and strengthen the CSDs so we can kind of lock some of the things in that we love. And um, to work with the county officers to make sure they understand what the community wants. And they know it, they can hear from us. And also, um, Last thing is to uh, fight this high speed train. I think this is going to be uh, a, big, a big thing for all of us in Acton. So, thank you. Um, Chris Crossdale? That's right. Yes. I'm Chris Crossdale. I've moved out here about three years now. Um, although I've been driving through the community for 30 years and I've been jealous of everyone that lived out here for those years. But it just uh, came to pass three years ago that it was time for me to uh, move and I moved out here. I've got a uh, seven-year-old daughter that uh, enjoys the lifestyle, and um, as uh, a lot of people, it was an eye-opener about four months ago when we uh, started hearing about a high-speed rail that was pretty much coming to light very rapidly. Uh, the sea expansion area, which I think is absurd, when they uh, came and met with us a few weeks ago and I was here, and, and I, I have a feeling that even they didn't know what their restrictions were going to be on our properties and that they had already voted on it, I thought it was just an insult to all of us. So I am a um, veteran, I am a uh, developer, um, an inventor, I've got a lot of uh, different skills that I can bring to the board out here, and um, I think the whole definition where everyone's been trying to define what rural is, 
um, working backwards. Rural is not a high speed train. Um, it is not more drive throughs. There's not more traffic off the freeway coming through our community. Um, I know it's not helicopters putting electrical wires over our heads without any type of uh, remorse, even though they try to be considerate for a lot of the people that are affected by that. And um, I really think that um, there's a lot that I can bring to the board to help out get this community back on its track because right now I see a lot of division and um, the community standards are outdated. They need to be updated. Mike Hanlon. Hainline. Hainline. Sorry. Oh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name is Mike Hainline. I've lived here in Acton for five years. I served on the town council now for four years. I moved up here to Acton because I own horses and uh, left Santa Clarita because of the urban sprawl. Uh, when I first lived in uh, Santa Clarita, it was like a two lane road on Sierra Highway. The only market that was available was Dillon Becks. And uh, if you haven't been through Santa Clarita, it's a traffic jam. I mean, even on a weekday, it's, it's bumper to bumper. It's a shame. And I read with uh, City Council in Santa Clarita, failed because uh, I wanted the slow growth, not the uh, big growth that uh, Frank Ferry and all the other ones were pushing. And uh, I've been fighting to keep the uh, active rule, and I would like to continue to keep the uh, active rule with your support. I was also a Vietnam veteran and served in uh, Vietnam for two years. And uh, like I said, um, I want to continue serving here in the city of Acton. And with your support, I can do so. Thank you. Just really quickly, I want to remind everyone, no cell phones. And if they have them on, you can turn them off. Um, Tammy Forrest Lamb. Hi, I'm Tammy Forrest Lamb. I'm currently on the Acton Town Council. I volunteered a few months ago. This space had been open for about four months when Maureen had left. So I applied and took her position and was seated. I moved to Acton 15 years ago. I've wanted to live here most of my life. I've been coming here since I was five. I had a horse when I first moved here. Uh, he died about four years ago, so I don't currently have one. I do want to keep this town uh, rule, the country living. I know rule means different things to different people. I've looked it up in four dictionaries and two Googles and found six different things on what exactly rule means. I'm running for the town council mostly because I think property owners have some rights. I think we need to have some discipline on what we allow to come to our community. I'd also like to say that, I'm sorry, I just lost my place. I'd like to consider all community members' views and, I'm sorry. I've had a lot of organizational skills. I'm on quite a few committees. I try to keep up with everything. I'm just not sure where this is taking us, all this high-speed training and the SEA, and I'd like to be part of that. I think I'm very, very equal when I look at all sides of the question. I've done a lot of my own investigation on what's allowed, what's right, what's the hazards. Stop. Thank you. Fred Miller. I like where she said stop. <laughs> <laughs> Thought you did something wrong. <laughs> well, my name is Fred Miller, and uh, I've been on this probably about seven, eight months on this uh, town council. I'm retired from the LA City Fire. I was down in the city for since 1965. I was tired of the city uh, as long as, and then when I was uh, retired, I ended up in Candy Country. And like it's already been said, Candy Country is like a big parking lot now, it's just gone crazy. <laughs> So I moved out here with a, uh, my best friend, and she sold her house, I sold mine, and we picked Acton because we liked the, the place where horses can play in the backyard and, and the kids are a little safer walking down the street without 
drive-bys every day, and that sort of thing. And that's kind of what I've been involved in the last 25 years. And I was just kind of tired of it. So I, I really like Acton the way it is, the small town. One of the things that impressed us, we went to the bank, and there's no bulletproof shield in the front there. I thought that was cool. <laughs> oh, that's nice. You know, that's refreshing. Uh, worked in the community a little bit, uh, you know, whatever was asked. Ron, you asked us for a favor one day. And I unfortunately said yes to help you move the, the school. That was great. But, I mean, everybody's out here and they, they come together. And, and I like that. I don't like the Jerry train. Uh, I have no respect for our governor uh, at all. Uh, I think he's a weenie. If he was here now, I'd tell him to <laughs> I don't like the way they're taking the property. And I haven't heard anything on how they're going to take the property away from us now to bring that train down here. We don't want it. Take it somewhere else. I don't care if the Palmdale wants it. Let them keep it. I just think it's going to affect everybody here one way or the other. Uh, other than that, I believe in property rights. Stop. <laughs> and I've lived in Acton for 12 years. I'm also an escapee from the city. Lived in San Pedro, born and raised in the San Fernando Valley. So I've seen the changes and how things can incrementally uh, turn into an urban environment. Um, I've been a member of the town council for seven years. I work at Northrop Grumman. Been there for six, six years or so. I have horses, I've got sheep, I spin their wool. So I enjoy our rural lifestyle here. We have a great neighborhood, great community. Um, I've really enjoyed being on the Acton Town Council. I've enjoyed working with Jackie Eyre, Ray Billet, all these people, Fred, Mike, everybody. Um, we also, Ray Billet and Mike and Jackie, all of us, we worked hard with regional planning on the revision of the Elmo Valley uh, General Plan. Now it's called Town and Country. We worked hard on that, attending workshops, spending hours uh, to ensure that our rural lifestyle is protected through our zoning and, um, and land use. Um, so we were part of that plan, part of those protections. I was very glad to see that um, uh, Lillian po uh, posted the survey in the Country Journal asking people what their envision was of our town and it was loud and clear. People want the, let the town to stay rural they don't want freeway serving commercial businesses. They want commercial. They want community serving businesses. So that's what I want to continue uh, uh, doing on the Acton Town Council to protect the rural character of our town. To work on issues like the SEA, which is just crazy, um, to educate the bureaucrats. So we have a lot of work to do in the town. We have a good group. So thank you. Pam Walter. Okay, I'm a rebel and I don't want to use this. <laughs> You're going to. <in. laughs> <Okay>. Mine's more formal. I spent a couple days making sure that I was saying what I wanted to commu commu communicate to the community. One of the hardest decisions you'll ever face in life is choosing whether to walk away or try harder. A few days ago, I had to make a tough decision about running for the town council. After talking it over with my family, we decided we needed to try harder to protect Acton, our community, and our neighborhood. A daunting task is before the community of Acton, not only the high-speed rail project that I am involved with, but the many other issues plaguing Acton, as the rest of the members here have talked about. The new AV general plan that is about to be voted on by the Board of Supervisors. The Angeles Forest Monument that President Obama signed by executive order two weeks ago. The SEA boundary issue, again, due to go to the Board of Supervisors. The hauled water proposal. The possibility of many more freeway-oriented businesses, such as fast food restaurants. The possibility of a major drugstore chain wanting to build, again, with a drive through to cater to the freeway business. The potential urbanization of the Sierra Highway corridor from Red Rover to Santiago and more. I have to admit that my focus for the past three to four years has been on stopping or moving the high-speed rail out of Acton. 
About four years ago, the High Speed Rail Authority posted three new routes through Afton. One of those routes is 500 feet under my new home and 200 feet under my son's new home. I encouraged my son and his family to move to Afton from Toluca Lake so we could be closer to the grandkids. Those proposed routes is what started my Nordic Viking blood on a so slow simmer. How dare they come to my town and destroy homes, schools, churches, and the lifestyle we have all worked so hard to preserve. The rest of the story at the end. <laughs> I should be elected to the Acton Town Council because I think I bring a set of skills that currently is not uh, encompassed in any of the current members. And I think the skills that I bring are organization. Um, I've done things that a lot of people haven't when it comes to development. I'm in the cities, I'm in the counties, I'm at the planning departments, and I've put things through processes. And not only can I offer the ability to fight off a train and, and fight with the seat of development, I can also have other help other members of the community get things done on their property that maybe they don't have a way of, uh, of pursuing it. And we go to Fred Miller. Why should you be elected to the Acton Town Council? I have no idea. <laughs> That's honest. No, actually, I may not know all the little ins and outs of every little proposal or whatever, but I kind of always look at stuff, see how it's presented try to figure out which would be the best to uh, settle the problem. As far as what the, the council here has been working out like that, watching and everybody and, and listening to all the comments and picking something that, uh, picking out a side to be on that is good for everybody, but at least I'm here to uh, vote for the city of Acton. Uh, I wouldn't want to do anything to disrupt this city and make it into a larger city, but, yeah, but every situation is a little bit different. So I like to look at the, the both sides of the story and pick from there. And I enjoy this this, this city very much. Stop. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> She's good. Jackie Air, why should you be elected to the Acton Town Council? Well, honestly, I think that there are there are five seats available, and there are more than five people who are more than qualified out there. So, um, I, I, the skills I possess are: I've spent much of my professional life dealing with regulatory compliance, environmental compliance, CEQA regulations. I've also spent quite a bit of time on the Acton Town Council dealing with new regulations, dealing as Catherine pointed out, general plan amendment and general plan issues, understanding land, land use and the context of zoning regulations. And um, those skills can be useful to this town council. But I also bring the ability to technically analyze projects, and I'm very comfortable with numbers. But uh, and I would like to say that, as I said, you know, I would like to run for town council, but there are more than five people up here who are abundantly qualified, and I'd be thrilled if any of them won. Okay. Catherine Skye Tucker. Why should you be elected to the Acton Town Council? Well, I, I think I have a track record so far after serving for seven years and dealing with the whole myriad of issues, as I said before, working with regional planning on the, the AV Town Country Plan, helping represent the community, working with the other uh, Town Council <coughs> members on helping craft that plan. Now it's SEA, you know, commenting on that. I'm good at... Um, outreaching to the different politicians, whether it be Norm or whoever we have to speak to, or um, Supervisor Antonovich's uh, other representatives, and just working good as a team on whatever issues facing us. Okay. Michael, I'm going to uh, Mike, I'm going to kill it again. Hey, Norm. Hey, Mike. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> Why should you be elected to the Active Town Council? Well, I'd like to think that I'm doing a good job, as Catherine, uh, Catherine Tucker was saying, um, certainly again, four years. Um, I was one of the persons uh, that got uh, Mike Antonovich's uh, attention about the Metrolink station. 
to get that one coat of paint because it was in dire uh, straits. The paint was peeling. I mean, coming down the track, it looked terrible to be coming into a community that looked kind of like a run-down uh, town. And it's not. It's a beautiful uh, little quiet uh, community, and I like to keep it uh, that way. And uh, again, working with everybody here on the panel, and also uh, also working with the people that's, that I know that put, uh, put me in here in the first place. Pam Walter, okay. why should you be elected to the Act of Town Council? I think similar to some of the other people that have already stated what, they, what their expertise is. I've been a realtor for 25 years. I am married to a general contractor. I know my way around the county the different agencies. I've got a good working relationship with various agencies, whether it's regional planning, building and safety, fire department, health department. We've worked with them for many years. I also think that being a realtor, I understand the property rights issues that face so many people, and especially this new SEA project that's coming at us where they could be taking away some of our property rights. I'd like to be involved in that to make sure that that doesn't happen uh, in our community. Um, I, I'd like to be involved in the, <laughs> I'd like to be, that's okay. I'd like to be involved in the uh, community standards that needs to be Stop. redone. Thank you. Tammy Force Lamb, why should you be elected to the Active Town Council? Like I said before, I've only been on the town council for a couple of months. I am recently retired, and I do have quite a bit of time. When some events had happened, I was able to go to neighbors, go to soccer games, go to the dance studio, go to baseball games, and talk to people and just ask them their personal opinion so that I could survey the area. I also went and saw the project. I sat around and looked at it, I gave it consideration on safety, and people's pros and cons of that. What I found was, it's not an easy job. I'd like to learn more about the law and the different codes and how they apply. But I think mostly is that I'm new at this, so I have a fresh brain. That I'm not overwhelmed by all the, all the standards and how they're met. Just mostly that I like to go talk to people and find out their opinion and bring it to the council. Thank you. Tom Costin, why should you be elected to the Action Town Council? Well, this was something that I never envisioned myself doing. <laughs> it's great. I, it came completely out of left field, but uh, I was asked by a few people and I considered it to be also have our own considerations, our own property. But my, I'm a software developer and engineer, and I have a very logical way. When I have a problem, I dig into it and I find all the details. And, and that is my thing. Jackie can attest because I've been picking her brain for a couple of weeks. When I need to, when I want to find out about something, I dig all the way to the bottom. I don't, I don't go halfway. I don't make assumptions. I get to the base and I work myself back up. So I think that skill is uh, going to be very helpful with the town council. Um, and again, we just, I think that we need to work with the county and the county officers and we need people that understand how things work and can have that, and can also talk to them. Okay, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Frankly, I would like any kind of a nice restaurant in the Akron, it seemed like I, well, I moved in about 10 years ago, and we have less places to eat now than, than we did then. Uh, Subway just went under, Don Cuco's, uh, which is a shame because we like to go out and eat a lot. Uh, I, I don't really mind the drive-through uh, all that much because you've got to drive if it's a sit-down restaurant, you got to drive in and out anyway. Uh, so, and, and in some cases, like the young lady that uh, was here last week talking about she had uh, foster children, and it's a little hard to leave them in the car while you go in and get the food. That's just a safety issue. 
The other one, there's people, one lady talked about having a, a horse trailer pulling. It, you know, it's just too hard for her to get out and leave the horse. Bob. Jackie Ann, do you want more fast food restaurants in Acton? Well, Acton already has three fast food restaurants. And I don't have any opposition to restaurants, but they have to be neighborhood serving and not freeway oriented. So, I, want, I also want to point out that the purpose of the town council is to bring the wishes of the community to the agencies who make the decision. And this community has made it quite clear that they do not want any more drive throughs Now, whether that means just fast food, and whether the question is referring to drive throughs or fast food or not. Um, but since the town council's responsibility is to bring the concerns of the community to the county, the community has spoken clearly on this issue, and I wouldn't weigh in differently. Catherine Sky Tucker, do you want more fast food restaurants in Athens? Um, I'm assuming the question means, do you want fast food restaurants with drive-thrus? The questions were posed by the people in the audience. Okay, the well, so it's I, kind of hard to understand, yes. but um, like Jackie said, we, we are, the Acton Town Council is, our, t our job is to represent the wishes of the community. The community very clearly said, like 400 to 50 votes in the, in the country journal survey that they don't want drive throughs more drive throughs They don't mind other restaurants in town. So I'm not opposed to restaurants. I just don't want them to be, they, like the community said, they don't want fast uh, drive throughs which are freeway serving. They can be community serving. Mike Hanlon? Hanlon? <laughs> <laughs> One of these days, Mike did it. I, Mike uh, has a problem. Okay. Anyways, um, I would strongly uh, oppose fast food, uh, I mean, drive throughs uh, Again, with the uh, survey that was took with the Country Journal, the people spoke, and again, I work for the people. So I would, would represent the people by saying no. Well, I'm going to assume that when you're talking fast food restaurant, that you are assuming that there's a drive through with it. So in that case, no, I am not for another drive through Like we've already known, there's three drive throughs in Acton right now with fast food. Um, I'm not opposed to any restaurant, but I also am very concerned about the precedent that will be set by any more drive throughs In fact, we know that Taco Bell is interested, and now we know that a, a super drugstore is interested, also wanting a drive through So where will this lead us? Um, we've got to be smart about how our community is developed. And so bottom line, at this point, I'd have to say no, I'm not for any more fast food restaurants with drive throughs I'm going to clarify that. Okay. Tammy Forslam, do you want more fast food restaurants in Acton? I don't think we need more fast food restaurants. I do like restaurants. I think we need a few choices. Um, now that we've lost a couple, it seems it's more difficult to get uh, food or if you just want to drive up and get something. I don't oppose the drive through I don't think the co community spoke. The 400 and something, almost 500 people that filled out the survey is less than 10% of this town. Most people didn't fill out the survey. We were also brought a petition from Country Club Feed with almost 400 people that wanted it. I think the drive through part has to be relative to each specific project, where it's at, safety concerns, and does it serve the community or just the freeway. I consider all of that when I make a decision. Each project needs to be separate. Do you want to stop? Okay, good. <laughs> Tom Costin, do you want more fast food restaurants in Acton? I think any restaurant of any type is fine. I think we all want choices. But as for the drive throughs I, I, I don't think I'm opposed to drive throughs I'll tell you why. Because 
they say, well, the drive through will get used by people in Acton because it's convenient. But if you ever drive down the 14th through Palmdale, you'll realize that there is not one fast food free uh, restaurant available on an off ramp. You all have, you have to get off and you have to drive down the road a few blocks or go around the corner or whatever you have to do. In Acton at Crown Valley, is a very easy, very accessible area. And to think that if we put a drive through just to serve our community, I think we're fooling ourselves. I think it will be very convenient for anybody going by. So I'm opposed to drive throughs I'm not opposed to restaurants. Chris Crossdale, do you want more fast food restaurants in Acton? Uh, again, just like everyone else, I'm, I'm pro for restaurants. I think choice is great. Uh, anything with a drive through I would say no. Anything that pulls traffic off of the freeway that's going to serve any, anyone else other than our community, absolutely not. And it's, it's just simple. No drive throughs nobody gets off the freeway in Acton, if it's an emergency they can get some gas, but I prefer everyone in Acton is allowed here, but you know, everyone getting off the freeway, I think if they didn't have that ARCO station, there would have been the shooting that was up by the high school a year or two ago, there would be thievery and, and other problems that go on. I've been hit up for people, uh, there was a guy from Los Angeles asking me for 20 bucks for gas, I says, well, I'll give you a couple of gallons. He goes, no, I just want the $20. And I think there's a bunch of riffraff getting off the freeway over there. And I, you know, it was up to me. I put a fence off and let everyone in the back and have a little pass card to get off the to remove gang graffiti that is on private property that LA County can't remove? Um, my understanding is that um, the way the regulations are written, and I have to do research on this, and I am a fanatic about research, so but my understanding is if the, if, the, if the graffiti is heinous and offensive and has the county can go in and file a, a, a legal action against the property owner to either be allowed to go in and clean it up or to have them clean it up. But I, I believe there has to, I think there's some degree of, of, of naughtiness in the graffiti to, to create that. So the, uh, the other situation is, you know, I, I would have no right and neither would the town council to force somebody to repaint their house. But the county, I do believe, has substantial wherewithal to make that happen. And the town council would have an obligation to bring this to the county's attention and to try to force the issue with them and make sure it gets addressed. But I do need to do research, so I'll get a better answer later. <laughs> Catherine Sky Tucker. Um, I don't really, uh, I know the county and the sheriff department, they have their graffiti task force, and I know graffiti is a form of tagging and it's very dangerous, can be very dangerous to our community, so I, like Jackie, I'd have to do some research on this and um, see what our options are, either working with the sheriff department or county task force. Okay, Mike Kane line. And she got it right, too. <laughs> Thank you. Well, as, as Catherine said, that uh, working with the LA County uh, Sheriff's Department basically is the only, only option that we really have. Um, I'm a correctional officer, and we, you know, once in a while I have a cleanup crew, but I don't think the city of Acton would like to have inmates in our community. So I would definitely say no to that. But uh, I'm open to anything that the board would approve on. Um, there's not really a lot, being a whole lot that we can do just uh, by going out there to somebody's property and asking permission to paint it. So, again, I'd have to take, take that into consideration. And Walter, do you need it? No, it's, it's fine. It's a difficult question because I'm pretty sure that I know where the writer is talking about and it's been an issue in the community for a number of years. I don't know what's been done up to this point to try to remove this other than with the county officials and the sheriff's department. So again, I'm going to have to plead that I don't know, but I would certainly um, feel that the town council would have to pursue it as much as they can. It's part of our community and it needs to be repaired and fixed. 
it's sending a message that needs to be removed. And I would be diligent in trying to pursue that. Tammy Forslam. I'm going to say this question. Want me to repeat it? No, no, I can just answer. Okay. With my power washer. <laughs> <laughs> um, a couple of years ago when I came home at about 5 o'clock in the morning, the uh, easy takeout burger had been tagged. I did take my power washer down there, asked the manager, do you want me to blow that off of there? He said, yeah, he gave me the hose, I hooked it up. I think most people that have graffiti on their property either are unaware of it or don't have the means to repair it. I think if they came to the county and asked them, could you help me, or came to us and asked them if you help me, or just offer, say, do you know you have graffiti on your sign that's on your property? Can you please remove it? Do you need help moving, removing it? We have Boy Scouts, we have Community Queens, we have Girl Scouts in this area. All those people could gather up a gallon of paint and help paint out the graffiti. It wouldn't be that difficult, and I don't think property owners want it on their property, so I think they'd be willing to let us help them remove it. Tom Austin. Well, thankfully, graffiti is not really a huge problem in our town, but we have seen it come and go. Uh, on Aliso Canyon, where I live, they graffiti the bridge, they graffiti the rocks. Um, the residents got together and scraped it off. The rocks we scraped with a wire brush, got it off. But I have to agree with Tammy. This is, the community's got a lot of local resources, and I think in the case of graffiti, if someone's unable to, to take care of it, I think as a community, we can offer to facilitate that by saying, hey, we've got some people that can help you, and the town council can facilitate that by contacting people. It's a small town. Work gets around fast. So, I think the only situation where you would need to go further than that is with some of the commercial properties, and maybe that's what the, the, the person who posed the question was referring to along the freeway. Uh, if the owners of commercial buildings don't take care of it at a certain point, I think that it's our duty to go to the county and say, hey, what's the recourse? We need to get after these people. This needs to be taken care of, because if we don't take care of the graffiti, we know that they come back and do more. If you take care of it right away, they tend to stop. Um, Chris Crosdale? Well, I, I think it's a fine line trespassing on someone's property without their permission, so that would be unethical. Um, I, I think that, you know, the free means of removing graffiti is, is fantastic, and I think if someone's unwilling to remove it, then you have to get a hold of the county with code enforcement. But, but one step further, instead of just constantly being uh, reactive, I, I would prefer to be proactive, and my real Thing is everyone says you know the uh, penalties have to fit the crimes and, and it's been going on a long time and I, I think that someone once told me that graffiti they just keep doing it because it's just a misdemeanor and um, you can get misdemeanors all day long and never have to pay real fines and never have to go to jail for it and I really think that uh, if we're having a large problem then maybe it's time to go to the county and say you guys need to increase the fines and have a little bit more of a deterrent to keep these kids from doing it and a lot of our young kids are teenagers and young adults. Fred Miller. Uh, graffiti. Big problem down in LA and such. Not so much out here. However, uh, I can't remember a year or two ago, came to the house and, and there's a water tank there and somebody had spray painted a swastika on it. And I told Kathy, I said, you know, let's get some paint. Let's go fix that. Because I just didn't want to see it. Before I could even get down there, the owner of the property had already started painting the tower and uh, getting rid of the swats to go. And, that, and as far as getting the county to come out and do it, well, we know how quickly they are to solve a lot of our problems. It gets caught in that bureaucracy. I, I think, you know, like you mentioned, uh, you know, Boy Scouts, different groups, maybe we can set up something like uh, we do every year or so, we go over to the cemetery and clean up. Nobody's going to clean up except us. So I wouldn't mind jumping in on that with a power washer or whatever. I've got one I can loan. Uh, real quick on something that happened Stop. in this city. Okay, come on. <laughs> <laughs> Not really. Okay, though. Okay. Next question. Favor or oppose making all property along Sierra Highway and the 14 Freeway commercial zoning? Um, as I said before, I was part of the, uh, the group, took part in the workshops for the um, AV Town and Country uh, Plan, and 
that established where the commercial zones were in Acton, and I agree with those commercial zones. I do not agree in making Sierra Highway a uh, whole commercial zone. Do not. Okay. Michael Hainline. Well, it seems to me that the most of the Sierra Highway is commercial anyway, so I would have no opposition to do, uh, continue having Sierra Highway commercial zone. Excuse me, can I, can I ask a point of clarification? No. 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 Good. What parts of Sierra Highway are you talking about? It, it where to where? Excuse me. We can't have any questions or anything from the audience. This yeah. is strictly. If you have a question, you can feel free to take it back. Okay. Anybody wants to ask Pam Walter, can you repeat the question? Do you favor or oppose making all property no, along Sierra Highway and the 14 freeway commercial zone? No, we don't. There's residential property along from, I'm going to say from Red Rover to uh, Santiago. So no, I'm sorry, I don't approve of it. I think that there's certainly places along Sierra Highway where it could be developed commercially, but there's also the idea that we are protecting the property rights of people that already live there as, and have their homes there. So I, I, I would have to look at the project, see if it really fits the location, and go from there. Every project, every property owner deserves the right to have their project looked at and evaluated. But as far as just letting it all go, no, I don't agree. There's portions of it that are too narrow between the 14 freeway and Sierra Highway where nothing would fit there anyway. So each project warrants um, a look. Tammy Forslam, do you favor or oppose making all property along Sierra Highway and the 14 freeway commercial zone? I oppose making all the property commercial zoned. I do believe each plot needs to look at individually what the reason for making it commercial or non-commercial. If it's a plot between two buildings, of course it would need to be turned into commercial. You wouldn't put a house there or a pig farm or whatever you would put. I just think that each project must be looked at individually. We must go out to the site and look at it and think about it for a few minutes. What would happen if we put a building here? Could we see people pulling in, pulling out? Could we see parking? Could we see any business even going there because it's too far or too close or it's just too crammed up? I just think each project needs to be looked at individually and there's many, many miles of Sierra Highway that are just for residential. Okay, Tom Costin. No, I don't see making the whole Sierra Highway commercial. Um, there's quite a bit of commercial there already, and a lot of it's very uh, poorly utilized already, very lo low utilization of the commercial property. We already have a process, and if you have land use that's land use designated agricultural or residential, and you want to get a perp, you want to get a, a change it to commercial, then you go through the process and you, uh, you state what you want to do with the property. Now, if, that, if what you want to do with the property supports the town and the community, and the community's behind it, then I, yes, I think that's, uh, you know, this is what this town council, it's part of the responsibility of the council here. So, you know, if it's zoned residential or agriculture now, it should not go automatically to commercial. And also the, uh, the, the general, or the AV plan, didn't think that either. So all those uh, plots seem to stay about the same as they were. Chris Crossdale. I would not agree with turning all of it commercial. And uh, each individual plan, I wouldn't agree with just flipping property over to uh, commercial either. I think it's got to be a complete plan that would identify its future use um, rather than just turning to commercial if someone wants to, to do that. But if it has a, a purpose and it's a complete worked out plan, then it can be reviewed and, and um, possibly done. Dorothy Daniels, repeat the question. <laughs> No, I think I, I think I've gotten it. Got First it. of all, I'm going to ask for forgiveness for being late. I, I, have to say the um, I opened my home up to Tony Strickland, who's running for Congress, to all the residents of Acton who were interested in meeting him. So that's where I've been. Um, I couldn't cut anyone off because they had 
in very important issues like the, the rail that's possibly coming through, education, uh, a variety of different issues. So it was really important, I think, that we gave the actual residents a chance to meet him too. He was at the council meeting last week. I met him and I offered my home. I'm bipartisan. I wasn't there for him, for him specifically, but that gave everyone the opportunity to meet him. Um, in terms of the commercial zoning for Sierra Highway, I truly believe that it really needs to be looked at as an individual basis. I don't agree that everything should just be, you know, flatlined and everything is the same. But there, if it's something that will improve uh, the lives of our residents and still maintains a rural lifestyle, then that's something we can look at in a commercial sense. But we would have to look at it. And I really believe that working as a council person for the city means working. Um, that we have to go, as you said, to the site, look at it, how does it impact the traffic and so on. Um, Fred Miller? I'm kind of in the same boat. We need to look at the uh, project that's being presented and see if it fits into what we're trying to do here in Acton. Not uh, By making it all commercial, I think is a wrong way to go. Making it all residential is the wrong way to go. Because right now it's a mixture of both. So, and it seems to be right now they're working and living pretty much together. But uh, any kind of new proposal would probably have to be looked at by everyone when we're voting for that. Okay. Jackie Ayer. Um, can you read the question, please? Sure. Do you favor or oppose making all property along Sierra Highway and the 14 Freeway commercial zoning? Well, that's about 10 miles on both sides, so 20 miles of commercial development. And even if this community were fully built out to the residential densities that we have in place, that would be way more commercial development than this community could possibly support. So the purpose of that would be to turn it all into, or mostly be, freeway survey. And that I am absolutely opposed to. And I would not need to look at every single lot and make a decision on a one-by-one -one basis, because I already know that, that with 20 miles of commercial development is far too much this community could ever need, and would therefore not be community serving on its face. Um, like I know uh, you can define rural as opposed to urban. Rural is an area where the prop residences and properties are larger. We have a, an opportunity to have a uh, animals and livestock here. Um, there is a lack of infrastructure because we choose not to have um, street lights, curbs, and gutters. Uh, so rural means space, it means a safe environment, it means quiet, um, it means a lack of urban density. Michael Hainline. Well, again, I moved out of Santa Clarita because of urban sprawl. When I saw it happen, and the quietness, peacefulness, and it's the, no, no clutter where there's houses that's on 10 acres, 5 acres, uh, instead of a house on a quarter of an acre. Uh, that's what I said. This is the kind of lifestyle I want to live. And I believe rural uh, is a lifestyle as well, where uh, you know people come together and help one another. That's uh, my definition of rural. Sam Walter. I had that in part of my statement that I didn't get to read earlier, so I'm just going to say off the cuff. What I had was larger pieces of property, um, peace and quiet, Animals large and small, dirt roads, privacy, safe neighborhoods, and whatever else someone assumes that rural is. To me, rural is, I live up a, a mile of dirt road, but yet I have neighbors, they're not close, but we all enjoy the same ruralness. We all in, uh, had a different vision probably of what Acton means as far as rural. Some people wanted the public utilities, but they still love it that they're able to live on an acre of land, but still have paved streets, county water, and all the utilities. I, I met somebody up in Forecast Homes a couple of nights ago, and they moved here. 
simply for the peace and the quiet. They retired here. Didn't know there was that many retired folks up in forecast. They moved away from Santa Clarita for that reason. Tammy Forslam. My definition of rule is a place where we can have our animals, large lots, some views, privacy. We have some community areas where we can get things we need that are all clustered together that you can go outside in your backyard and do what you want without the neighbor saying, turn that off or shut that down or stop it. I like to walk. Um, there's plenty of acres and acres of land to walk around. And I think mostly it's the sense of people have that live rule. They help you. If you have a flat tire or your car won't start, if your horse gets out, they'll lasso it for you and catch it and tell you, hey, your horse is out. I just think it's a whole lifestyle. It's not just a certain way a community is designed. Okay, Tom Costin. Well, I've got four definitions, four definitions for the world in acting. We've got Angeles Forest Highway area. We've got Aliso Canyon. We've got town. And we've got uh, the area uh, along Sierra Highway and, and uh, Shannon Valley. Is that correct, Shannon Valley? Mm -hmm. So we have you know, four distinct rural areas in this town that are completely different, but they all have this, they all share the same characteristic of there's no stoplights, there's no, there's, uh, you know, there's, there's a lot of dirt roads, there's room for people to breathe, there's trails for your horses, you can go hiking, you can go running, you can get up in the morning, you don't have to uh, close your blinds on your bathrooms. Um, <laughs> something that we can't do anymore because the helicopter's hovering outside. But uh, <laughs> rural is, it's like somebody said, I know what choreography is when I see it. Well, in acting, we know what rural is when we see it. We have it right now. And I'd like to keep it that way. Don't quote him on that. The choreography part. <laughs> Chris Crossdale. Well, I, I think rural is is a lifestyle, and um, I think to take it one word further, a rural community is one where everyone drives down the road and you can wave at least half the people and you know them. I think um, no one has a 24-hour fitness membership in the community because their gym is a pick and a shovel and weeding and whatever else we have to do and uh, shoveling horse manure and, and in all honesty, I'd rather do that any day than go run on a treadmill in nowhere. Um, rural is to me that my daughter can, you know, it gets emotional, but um, she can go out and play. So um, that's what it comes down to. You know, you gotta love where you live. Sophie Daniels. I think rural means something different to every person in this room. I think for some and people, she like, I think for some people, I'm sorry, I'll, Mama Six, I can do it. Mama Six, is it on? Yeah. Um, I think rural means something different to everyone in this room. I think for some it means property. I think for others it means the sense of community, which is why I moved here. Uh, we, we came from the city. I was actually brought up more in a rural um, atmosphere. Moved to the city. Um, unfortunately, my daughter was a victim of a crime from a next door neighbor. And we moved here four years ago. And we moved here because this is what, to me, rural means family, community. Um, I, I see a lot of people that I know, for, I'm the PTS uh, o president for VHS. Um, I try to stay involved and I think for me rural is safe and rural is uh, quiet. Fred Miller? Yeah, rural. Um, there's a lot of things I like about living out in the country, which is where we are. And I really get a charge out of watching people ride horses up and down the street. You just don't see that down in L.A. And uh, just what's happening recently, uh, we ended up in Acton's first traffic jam, I think. Uh, we have a neighbor that has about 200 sheep. <laughs> oh, I was in that traffic jam. Yeah, it's not the fastest thing to get across the street. But he's going around helping neighbors by bringing his... 200 sheep uh, going on their property. They eat the weeds, which makes the fire department all happy and whatever. 
It's just, it's an inconvenience going down the road and here's 200 sheep. But you know what? I never saw that in LA or in Candy Country. Uh, and I like it, actually. It just kind of gives me the idea that, you know, I'm out in the country. This, if you're going to live out in the country, this is what you expect. I like walking around a little bit. Did she say stop? Yes. That's <laughs> as forceful as there was before. Um, I would really agree with every, what everybody said here. I, for me, when I see a, a horse in the McDonald's drive through that tells me just about everything I need to know. <laughs> and that's rural. But I, I'm going to go a step further, and I'm going to, I'm going to answer the questions if it was asked about a rural community. And a rural community, to me, is an entirely rural community. There is commercial, there is industrial, where we have some of the storage facilities, there is residential, but the whole community is rural. And that means not a section cut through the middle of it is commercial or given over to commercial businesses that are freeway serving and not community serving. So um, a rural community is entirely rural and it's not divided up into commercial sections and non-commercial sections or residential sections. So uh, and having a horse be able to walk anywhere in the community, that meets my definition of what a rural, what a rural community is. Safely walk through any part of it. And our children as well, of course. Well, while serving on this uh, town council, I went to the meetings down in Los Angeles and uh, sat there. Unfortunately, Palm Hill outvoted us because we didn't have that much of uh, notice on it and couldn't get a lot of the community uh, to come out to it because of the such a short notice. And uh, as far as uh, Southern California Edison. I've been fighting with Southern California Edison for quite a while, especially with uh, Catherine and Tucker. And, um, I've talked to some of those people over there because they must think that area is uh, a drag strip because I almost had two collisions with the, some of the vehicles. And I brought that up to the attention of the lady from Southern California Edison. So, uh, and I also served on the uh, uh, committees for the community standards and bylaws committees as well. So I've worked hard keeping out those. Pam <laughs> 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 Walter, can you repeat the question? What have you done personally to fight the encroachment of outside threats to our community, such as Edison Project Zoning, High Speed Rail, Community Standards Review, etc.? For the past um, three to four years, my friend and co-chairperson, Kim Roth, we have been diligently working to get educated about the high-speed rail and the threat that it's proposing to our community. Um, we both jumped into this project because of understanding that, that there was going to be a high-speed train coming very close to our properties, either next to it or under it or close. Um, it took considerable effort on Kim's part and my part to be able to research all this information because we didn't know anything about this high-speed train. We had no maps to go by. We didn't have information. So we started researching the lawsuits and went to meetings, went to the town councils in other communities, especially Palmdale City Council there to learn why they had sued to get the train brought. It Stop. then... Okay. Tammy Forslam. Tell me to repeat. Yes. What have you done personally to fight the encroachment of outside threats to our community, such, such as Edison Project Zoning, High Speed Rail, Community Standards Review, etc.? Uh, the first thing I did was volunteer for the town council and was seated in the empty seat. I got some information that was given to me in a box. I read all of that information. It went about the high speed rail and what they knew about that. There was papers on the general plan, the town and country plan. I've slowly been learning. It takes a while. It's confusing. And I think one of the things I did was I just got involved. I don't mind going to meetings. I've been to several. I try and go when I can. 
Um, I think the biggest thing that I've done was step up and say, okay, I want to be part of this. Tom Costin, do you want me to repeat? Or? Well, unfortunately, Edison is water under the bridge at this point. Uh, nobody, very few people, I'm saying we there's a lot of us that have been impacted by Edison, and I know that uh, Catherine and uh, I are severely impacted. So it really was an eye-opener because what Edison did and what they said they were going to do really did two different things. So this thing grew into this monster that surprised everybody, maybe even surprised Jackie, but uh, it did. So whether I get elected or not to the town council, when it comes to the high-speed train, which is also threatening my property and everybody along Lisa Canyon and everybody uh, down the 14 freeway corridor, pretty much anybody in active, I'm going to be working with them on uh, doing everything we can to, uh, to, to uh, stop it or force it way, way, way up into the uh, Angeles National Forest where we can avoid acting completely. Um, Chris Crossdale? I'm just now being brought up to speed over the last four months, no pun intended, with the uh, high speed <laughs> ground. And I don't think anyone uh, in the room can hold a candle to what Pam and Jackie have done, and I uh, commend them on everything. And so I've been working with them. And any meeting I can attend, I am there. Uh, and I think I've only missed one now in the last four months. Um, as far as Edison, I was totally unaware of what was going on with Edison um, up until three or four council meetings uh, ago when I started uh, coming and all of a sudden there was this, this um, employee from Edison here and they were talking about what was going on at your residence and I was appalled that they were just being able to overrun everything. So from here going forward, I would be extremely involved and extremely available to anyone else that had problems. Um, but in the past, I'd say it's only been the last four months that I've really been stepped up and, and trying to get involved. Dorothy Daniels is similar. Uh, you know, I, I, I spent the first four years living here, getting to know the community, getting to know the people, waving at everyone I see as I come off of my dirt road and um, enjoying that. Um, I tend to do a little bit different, though, when I'm working with something. I tend to go to the people that make the decisions. So the state senator that, um, uh, at first, is uh, Senator Strickland, who's now running for Congress. The, the highways, uh, rail, this high-speed rail, is going to have to get funding. They're going to have to eventually get more funding, and that will have to be approved by going to our congressmen federally. There will be federal dollars in there at some point, state obviously. We need to, to, to take it to that level, not that that's not already happening, but that's why I opened my home tonight, so that they could really hear how serious the problem this is, and that it's not acceptable, and according to um, uh, Senator Strickland, Congressman, probably future Congressman, it won't happen. Stop. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Go girl, tell me. Uh, Fred Miller. What, question repeated? No. Okay. <laughs> I think she owes me 10 seconds. <laughs> you won't prove it by her. I know. Uh, to be perfectly honest with you, up until I joined uh, this council, I didn't know much about what was happening over in your neck of the woods with the DWP and everybody. Frankly, because where I live, it, it just didn't concern me. It didn't affect me, so I really wasn't paying too much attention to it. Now I, I am paying a little more attention to it and would like to give my support and whatever I can do to help you with your problem over on your side. What criteria? That's an interesting question. Um, I think probably the most important thing to me is to know what people want from the town council. What do you expect us to do if there's a project that's coming before us that we don't know exactly what to do with? I would certainly start contacting people in my sphere of influence and try to find out where they um, what their opinion was about it. Um, I am the current president of the Acton Apodelsi Town Council. I'm sorry, <laughs> the Brokers Association, thank you. <laughs> wow, sorry Mike, <laughs> sorry. Oh my God, thank you. Jump right in there, take Mike's job. Okay. We're hurrying. I know. So, 
you know, I would want to know what the realtors thought. I would want to know, um, I volunteer at Meadowlark. I would want to know what the younger uh, parents please. over there want. Thank you. Sorry, Mike. Um, you can nail that. Tammy Forslam. When voting on an issue, what criteria do you use to make sure you are representing the population of acting the best you can? Some of the things that I did on issues that I voted on, the first was to check and make sure it met acting community standards. The second thing I looked at was safety. Was it safe? Was the plan something that would work? The third is I went and talked to people that I totally do not know, who do not know me, who never met me, and some people that I do know, and I talked to my neighbors. And some of the people that totally didn't know me gave me straight answers that they felt. Some of the people I know, like at the dance studio, probably gave me an answer that they thought I wanted to hear. My neighbors were quite frank. What they wanted, because they've known me for a very long time, what they wanted, what their fears, and what their expectations was in the project. That's how I decide. Tom Austin. Well, I think the primary criteria would be to make sure that my point of view and my uh, is known on on on, on the, whatever the subject is. So I want people to know how I feel about it. And in this town, when you tell somebody how you feel about it, if they don't agree with you, you hear about it. <laughs> so, and just represent it honestly, and that, that's all there's to it. So once people know what you think, and they know your honest opinion, then they will come to you and say, hey, I, don't, I agree with that, I don't agree with that. So as long as I think we represent our personal opinions, and what we learn, you know, basically from the standards, and from the county, and all that, honestly, I think the decision comes quite easily. Um, Chris Crossdale? I think the community standards are, are a good place to start. Um, I also think they need to be revised and updated. Um, and there's been talk of a committee that would do that. And from that point on, if it's a real controversial decision that needs to be made, I think you need to poll people. Um, and I think it's good to talk to people you don't know because you don't know everyone. But also I think the polls need to come from different areas, different age groups, um, different communities uh, within Acton. And, um, and at that point, I think you should be able to get a good decision. And my own opinion would be voiced. I wouldn't, I wouldn't hide it. But uh, ultimately, it would have to be a vote that was what the community wanted, not what I wanted. Dorothy Daniels. I, I agree with what I've heard um, from, from all of the candidates. I, I feel, though, that my job as a council person would be to represent the community. So, and, and no offense to what you said, but I, I feel that my job is not to have my opinion, but to listen to what the constituents feel is important for their community. Because I'm here voting for you. If we could all vote, we would. But you represent, or we represent you. And so I would have, you know, time at Perkin Up where people could come and share, tell me what you feel. What are your concerns? So that we can bring it to the table on council. Uh, PTSO. Did you say stop? Okay. PTSO. <laughs> you know, I hear uh, a variety of people, but I would also make sure that we have diversity. We want to hear from all age groups. We want to hear from the kids. What is your perspective if you're going to live here in Afton? I would like to hear from everyone. Fred Miller. <clears throat> I enjoy going around the town and talking to a lot of the people that I run into. And a lot of people really think the town council uh, has a lot of power and whatever we say goes. They're not quite that way. You know, we can recommend whatever, so that, you know, that's something that people have to learn, that, you know, what our opinions are and what we can actually get accomplished, maybe two different things. I learned a long time ago that you learn more by listening instead of talking. Mm -hmm. So, uh, to, you know, just to talk is you hear yourself talk. To listen to people, I I have a next door neighbor, love her to death, <laughs> but she's really big in conspiracy theories. And listening to her talk, you kind of go, where'd you get that from? You know, 
are you kidding? Really serious? Yeah, I heard it on the internet. Jeez, oh, you know, this is what, what I deal with. But talking to her is a little bit different than talking to store owners who are, are caught in the middle of doing business and, and whatever. Uh, I, I like to listen to people and then try to bring it into the city council. You need to start. No, the town council. Since city. Jackie Ayer, could you repeat the question? I sure can. When voting on an issue, what criteria do you use to make sure you are representing the population of Acton the best you can? Well, there's a number of resources that one must consult in making these decisions. First and foremost is the general plan that this community has. We had many community, many community meetings here to make sure that that, can, that general plan, which is the roadmap for development in our community, does reflect and did reflect what we want. And Catherine worked very hard on that. And um, so that's one resource. And for example, the general plan right now says you can't have signs that are more than 35 feet. Well, even regional planning doesn't look at our general plan because they, they have approved projects with higher signs than 35 feet, even though you're not allowed to have that in our general plan. So we need to look there. We need to look at the CSD. We also need to listen to what the community says when they come to these meetings, town council meetings or public meetings. We need to read letters in, that are published in the Acton Agudosi News in the Country Journal. We need to solicit input and represent what the community wants as it's reflected also in what the general plan documents say. Um, Catherine Skytacker. Um, I agree with Jackie that our job as uh, members of the town council, we look at the community standards, we listen to everybody that comes to the meetings, that's very important that people participate in our town council meetings, they make their voices heard, we look at the general plan, we look at the, uh, the AV general plan, um, and also Lillian's, when, when decisions get really hard, it was very, very helpful to have a survey go out to the community and have people fill it out and have each, you know, signature, each position verified. Um, so, it's a combination of things. Um, Mike Hainline. Well, everybody has uh, made a great point about community standards. Before we make any decisions, you've got to check it on the community standards, seeing if it's up to uh, what the community wants. Also, general planning is exactly the same as well. So, um, I do listen to the people and uh, talk to my neighbors and uh, all around the community that I've talked to. And then also, people that come into the uh, town council meetings, uh, and then they express their opinions as well. And I listen, and I'm always willing to listen to whatever anybody else has to say. That's how I base my opinions. So now we will go on to question number eight, and Tammy Forrest Lamb will answer first. What is the role of the town council when a project is brought to it? I believe the role of the town council when a project is brought to us is to see the plan, to see the opposition, to see how it would impact the community, and to listen to what people have to say about it. I also think that most people don't know that we are an advisory board, and we do advise the county about what we feel. They don't always follow it, but for the most part they do. I think a lot gets caught up in what people think the town council is. Some think it's a joke. Some think they have almighty powers and some don't really even care. And I get a lot of that statement. I think that the role of the town council is to make advisories to the county on what we think that our town wants. Thank you. Tom Costin. So I can the question? Yes. What is the role of the town council when a project is brought to it? Well, the role of town council would be to make sure that the project is uh, consistent with with our community standards, obviously with the AV plan and the general plan. But when it comes to, say, for instance, uh, private property, a lot of people say I want property rights. Um, 
the town council has to realize that property is uh, set up as uh, residential or agricultural or commercial, and to change that uh, from one to another, you really have to produce a uh, good reason for why the community needs those kind of changes. So we need to look at that as well. Obviously community input, I'd love to see more people show up to the, the meetings. I'm always surprised at how small uh, the uh, amount of uh, people we get at the, at the, uh, at the meetings. Uh, sometimes there's only seven or eight people. So I think the community, uh, the town council needs to go out in the community and get people wrapped up to show up and, and talk about what they want and how they feel about these things. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Chris Crossdale? I think the town council plays a pretty important role in trying to assure that the rural lifestyle is maintained. And by doing so, when plans are brought to the town council, they should not only review them and make recommendations, but they need to also look at exactly how it is going to affect the community and how we can improve and make it better. Every plan that's been executed could have been made better. And it, and it really comes down to effort and cost and to maximize what we can do with this community and keeping it the way it is, that's what our uh, job needs to be. Dorothy Daniels? I think that although this is a volunteer position, it's a job. And every single proposal that comes to the council needs to be looked at very responsibly. We need to do our homework. We need to make sure it fits within the regulations that are already here. But we also have to make sure the impact that it will make to the community and to as, as a whole and its members and and that takes work um, fred miller uh, well i think the the council has several rules one is to uh, hear a proposal see how it works into the into the plans and the most important i think is it's a sounding block for the people of Acton, where they can come into a meeting and express an opinion of theirs, uh, whether it's a, uh, a complaint or whether it's something in the community that bothers them or whatever. Sometimes we can help them, sometimes we can't. Uh, but I think it's, it's just a, a way of getting information from the, from the citizens of Acton. Check the air. Can you questions? What is the role of the town council when a project is brought to it? Well, you need to look first look at the project through the lens of the general plan, CSDs, and the zoning ordinance. And then um, you also then need to look at the physical layout of the project. Is it going to cause drainage problems? If it's a residential subdivision, are we properly clustering the lots? Are there, is there too, are there too many substandard lots? Um, have they address where all the blue lines are and where the drainages are going to be. Uh, we cannot rely on the county to do this for us. They never have done it well before. And we've often found a lot of problems when that's happened. And then we take all these findings and we present them to the community and solicit community input, because obviously things might have been missed. And then, based on the community input and these findings, we take a position on the, 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 the project and communicate that to the um, to the, the agency, whether it's the PUC, the re regional planning, health department, whoever it is. Catherine Skytech. Um, town Council, its role is we, like Jackie said, we evaluate each proposal as it comes before us to see if, it, if it's good for the community, if it satisfies the community standards, the general plan, um, whether or not, like Jackie said, if it's going to cause drainage problems, and from what I've seen over the years, regional planning does listen. When the Acton Town Council sends a letter approving of a plan with comment or approving of it you know, wholeheartedly, they do listen. That goes in the file of that development. So we do have, a, we are, we do have some, carry some weight. Michael Hainline. Uh, as Catherine said, and also Jackie said, um, community standards first thing at, uh, we check out, make sure that uh, it fits to their, our, their criteria, our criteria, and also uh, regional planning, whether or not uh, it's going to be also meeting their criteria. 
I have never seen any project that was brought to the council that's been pushed through on the very first night. Everything usually takes the time and goes through uh, proper procedures, notifying the community. Um, also, we don't uh, vote on it that, that way right off the bat. Everything does take time. So if a lot of people think that uh, things just get railroaded um, right on through without people knowing about it, it's, uh, they're living in false flame. Well, I agree with what the majority here has said. We, we need to understand the community standards. We need to be um, very knowledgeable about it. We need to be able to review the project, look at the blueprints, see if they meet what the community standards tell us. We need to be able to confirm with regional planning that they are doing everything that they're supposed to be doing to meet the standards for us. Um, we've seen problems, for example, when Taco Bell recently came and their drawing, they insisted, was a western decor and it wasn't even close. It was exactly like their Palmdale and Lancaster stores, but yet they insisted that they were pretty comfortable with how western it looked because of the color of the siding or whatever. So we need to be very on top of these projects. They're coming, they're going to change the look of our community. We need to um, be aware, be educated, and it, and it takes everybody on the town council to be able to do that. Well, like I said earlier, this was not something I ever expected to do. But I've seen what happens when you don't pay close attention to what's going on in your community. Uh, I'm personally being punished by what happens when you don't pay, uh, pay full attention. So, as Pam said, you either run or you run. And you run from council or you run away. <laughs> and we've decided, we've talked to my, my family and my wife and my kids, we decided we like it here. We want to stay here. So we're going to fight for keeping it, keeping the vision of Act we had when we moved here. And that's why I'm running for the council. Um, Chris Crossdale. What inspired me to run? Um, I've never been the type of person that doesn't participate. Um, I don't like complaining about things and then walking away, and I really am bothered by people that do, and I always say, you know, if you're going to complain, then you better participate. And just because you're in presence doesn't mean that you participate, and uh, that's just the type of person I am. So uh, when I see there's a lot of problems going on, I'm a part of the community now. Um, like I said, four months ago, I started being uh, introduced to all the different issues that are going on here. It seems like there's a lot of severe issues that are happening. And I figure I have a lot to contribute and I just wouldn't feel right uh, going with it if I didn't uh, try it on. Dorothy Daniels. Uh, I was inspired to run by my feeling that I moved here for community. I moved here for values. I moved here for small America. And I attended one of the council meetings, and I, I was saddened. I, I was saddened because there was a lot of disagreement, and it was angry. And it's not that we all can't have different opinions, because that's part of being an American, but we need to learn to do it respectfully. And one of the things that I've done uh, through my professional life is work with groups on different sides and bringing them together. So my voice isn't to put one foot over here while someone else has it over here. It's trying to see what does the community want and let's find that common ground. Fred Miller. Well, in the last 20 years, I've been volunteering uh, throughout LA with a foundation that I helped start. So I think as far as the time-wise, I, I know what really is, is required to put forth a decent effort in volunteering. With the town council, I was I like to say I was bullied <laughs> by some friends. <laughs> yeah. They actually talked me into it, and they said, "Well, you you know, you like the community, you want to help out, you want to do things. What a great way for you to get into doing some of the work." And uh, I hope that within the last few months that I've been here, that I've helped out a little bit. And some great people, and the ones that are on the board, are uh, great people to work with. So, and I'm sure we'll get more to continue, continue to do that. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
continue that effort. Uh, I would, I don't know, it's just uh, hard to explain, but I feel a, a, a purpose here by helping out. Stop, stop. Two of them? Stop, stop. Jack here. Um, I'm inspired by a number of things, not the least of which is my son who goes to the middle school. And so I'm very concerned about things that happen in that area. But it's more than that. We're a community, and I have friends throughout the community. Friends with wells that are going to be affected by the high-speed rail or the, the, uh, the, the uh, well stand that the county has. I don't have a well, but they're my friends, and so I want to work with them and help them. I don't live anywhere near the Edison lines, but I was astounded at what they were doing to my friends, and so I decided it was important enough, and this community is important enough, to put, a lot of, put my shoulder into that. Um, I am affected by the high speed rail, so obviously I'm inspired by that. But uh, we're a community and we need to stand together. We need to stand shoulder to shoulder and we need to make sure that this community remains the rural and fabulous town that it is. And that's what inspires me. Catherine Sky Tucker. Um, originally I ran for town council like seven years ago when I, I live along Angeles Forest Highway and one of my uh, I found out one of my neighbors wanted to start his own community standards district and partner with a developer who I won't mention. So I figured I better get myself in gear and I ran for town council and I went door to door and talked to everybody. And some people didn't even know they were in the active community standards district. And then along came Jackie and we've been, I've been helping her fight this tri-tip thing for all these years and then it's just one thing after another to, you know, try and save this, save our, our lifestyle, you know, high-speed rail, SEA, whatever comes along. You know, I want to try and keep, keep fighting for this area, because it's great. Michael Hainline. Well, when I joined the uh, Active Town Council four years ago, I did it uh, basically because I thought I could make a difference. I still think <laughs> I can make a difference uh, with the Active Town Council um, by putting my voice in there whenever it need be. And uh, also, as I mentioned, coming from Santa Cruz, I, I was uh, attempted, well, I did run uh, basically for the seat back down there in Santa Cruz. It was unsuccessful, but I you know, got my feet wet. So I still have the drive and the ambition to try to make a difference in this community and welcome them all. Welcome that. Pam Walter. I guess the thing that's most important to me about the town council and running for the town council is just the fact that there's so many projects that are staring at us right now. They, they came out of the woodwork. We started with, you know, I started with the high speed rail four years ago where I realized it was really going to impact our community, our lifestyle, and whether we should even stay here. And boy, like I said to Tom, it's Am I staying or am I running? You, you got a choice. And um, I think just that project alone, that I can continue along with the help of Kim and all the other wonderful volunteers that have been there with me throughout this, what I'm going to call a tragedy to our community. Um, I'd like to continue working for the high against the high-speed rail for our community. And that's where I'm at. Tammy Forslam. Can you read the question again? I'm yeah, sorry, sure. I've gotten off track. No problem. What inspires you to be of service slash volunteer your time to the Acton Town Council? Ever since I've moved here, I've volunteered in different places, a little bit at community center, some for the Chamber of Commerce, I've helped the Queens, I helped the park when they first started movie night, make a big screen. I've done a lot of things, but when I was working, I couldn't commit to anything on a daily, weekly, or monthly basis. Now that I'm retired, and I'm going to live here till I die so I can be buried for free in the Acton Cemetery, <laughs> no alternate plan, I need to make sure that this community is where I want to be and it is the lifestyle I want long for the next 20, 30 years, as long as I live. So that's my reason. I saw that there is open space and I noticed for four months, nobody stepped in. Nobody wanted it. I know that Darwin before me, he had volunteered because there was two empty spaces. 
So I thought, okay, this is what I'm going to do, and I'm going to learn about all of this. And it's a learning experience, Sorry. believe me. Passion. That's my passion, is community, is building community. One of the things that makes me so sad is when I go to the Friday night games and I watch our one high school that represents our entire town and the bleachers are empty. And I think, where are all the people? I don't particularly love football, but I'm on the sidelines taking pictures and getting knocked over. We all need to build this community. Taco Bell, the rail, all those issues need to be taken care of. But what is Acton? Acton is the people. And we need to find ways to support each other. And that will be my call uh, if I'm elected. Fred Miller? Can you repeat the question? Sure. How will you promote community involvement and engage the community in activities that may concern the town of Acton? <clears throat> well, certainly we have to uh, look at our, our paper that comes out and writing articles, whatever we have to do in order to uh, spur some kind of interest in, the, in this town. When you do a survey and you get you know, just 500 or 400 people to respond to it, there's a problem there. We need to, we need to get the people up and, and running to everything so that they can make their comments. Uh, like I said, like the football game with a lot of people not being there. I'm not going to be there. I don't have teenage kids anymore. Uh, however, uh, there are other functions in here and we try to get our neighbors and stuff to get involved in, whether it's a, uh, a garage sale down here, the women's club's always putting on stuff, enjoy going down there and those things. But we have to talk to our neighbors, we have to uh, get them uh, enthused in what's happening here, both pro and con. Stop. <laughs> Jackie Air, yeah. could you repeat the question? Please? Sure. How will you promote community involvement and engage the community in activities that may concern the town of Acton? Well, there's a number of avenues that are available, not the least of which is writing articles and uh, coming to the town council and presenting issues of concern that you perceive are coming down the pipe. But it's more than that. Um, for example, when they put the 4,000 pounds of chlorine gas right down here in our downtown area, nobody in this community knew about it. So I spent a lot of time with the fire department, with the engineers, getting all the backup information, and when I was prepared with that, then I brought it to the town council and said, oh boy, look what's going on. And I wrote letters to the Acton Wilson News and the Acton Journal, and the community was, was they, they came together, and we fixed that, and that chlorine gas is gone. But that's sort of just a template of, of, of what you need to do to represent or to present issues and concerns to the community. You have to package it in a way that it makes sense and that it's consistent with the actual project that's being proposed and not what regional planning might think it is or what High Speed Rail might say to us. <laughs> <laughs> Catherine Sky Tucker. Um, from what I've experienced and in, uh, in you know, the time I've been on the town council the last seven years or so. Um, fighting causes does create community here. I've seen that with High Speed Rail. I've seen that with Tri-Tip. I've seen how we've organized the community, how we network. And everybody on the town council brings their own strengths. You know, with, before Tammy Lamb, we didn't have a Facebook page, right? No. And I think we can do a lot more with social media. And, you know, you're, you're strong at that, and that's, I think that's great. I think we really need that. Um, RJ is, you know, has a resiliency group. He's really good at that. So everybody's got their own strengths. We can network with uh, the Dulce Town Council, ARTC, uh, whatever we have to do. But there's, there's plenty of cause, plenty of things to fight, and each fight brings us all together. So that's been my experience. Michael Hainlein. Well, I've been helping out the Active Community Club by uh, participating in uh, different plays. Uh, needless to say, this is one of the reasons why I have this on the, in the Christmas play uh, this year. So, <coughs> very active in that. And also, uh, getting out there and talking to the people. Um, trying to get them involved as well as also in the church. Um, 
I try to get more and more people to come out to these meetings to tell them, tell the people that uh, there's things that need to be done and faced and throw out what you need to be told. But, uh, you know, you can see what Bill's saying, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make a drink. Like some, sometimes it gets close to this uh, right here. But uh, I've enjoyed working with all the people on this uh, uh, panel and uh, hopefully continue to be able to do so. Yeah, Walter? Well, I think that um, Dorothy already used my word. I'm passionate about the things that I'm interested in and I'm not af afraid or ashamed to stand out on the street corner and get signatures if I need to. Kim and I got 800 signatures to send to the Federal Railroad Associator, what, what's it called, Kim? Federal, whatever, railroad thing. <laughs> because we wanted to try to stop the high-speed rail from getting their permits. They declared that they didn't feel that they had to get permits to do their project. Well, that's ridiculous. We have to get a permit to build a house. Who do they think they are? <laughs> so we went out, in one week's time, we got 800 signatures and, and overnighted them to Washington. They listen to us. They still talk to us. Jackie has a relationship with Stephanie Perez right now. So I, I am passionate about these things. You can't be passionate about everything. So you pick your battle and you go for it. And my battle is the high speed rail. Thank you. Tammy Forslam. Can you repeat the question? I'm sorry. I get... No, all right. How will you promote community involvement? and engage the community in activities that may concern the town of Acton. Um, when I first came on the Acton Town Council, they did not have a Twitter account, nor did they have a Facebook. I started a Facebook. We have 16 friends. <laughs> <laughs> well, a lot of people don't know about it. So then we started a Twitter account. That was an epic failure. I do not know enough about Twitter yet to control what was going on, and I was getting people in China Twittering, and it was just nuts. So I shut that off. So what I found is, if I started getting kids, maybe, to talk to their parents, because most parents don't know about Facebook unless they're spying on their kids, but I think it's an avenue we can use to get people in our meetings. I would love it if we could put the meeting up on something where they could see it. The majority of the people I talked to said, if I was not busy between 7.30 and 9.30, I would just go to bed early. <laughs> they don't have the time to come sit in these meetings. So. Tom Costin? So we definitely need more community involvement. I think that's the most important thing that this council, if any changes or any improvements are made, we need the community. So I think we need to educate people there's all kinds of ways. We have the Country Journal, we have a Facebook account now. Uh, I think I have a strength of finding, going into a problem, digging all the way to the bottom, working myself up. So in the process of doing that, you learn a lot and you see things you normally don't see when someone says, oh, the high-speed rail's coming, it's going to go through your backyard. Oh, they're going to move it to this guy's backyard. So you need to get to the bottom of the issues and you need to explain them from the foundation. And I think we can do that with um, a lot of the resources we have in town. It's just putting the effort and time in, which is why we're here. Um, Chris Crossdale. Well, I think community involvement is a, is a big thing. And, and the one thing that was totally evident to me, and I'll try to say it quickly, is that there is no one sure way to contact everybody in Acton. And the Country Journal is great, but even I admit that I don't read it every week because I've got so many other things going on. But if I got one email blast that said, hey, High Speed Rail meeting is this Wednesday, and I really think there's a lot of opportunity for us to try to get some sort of a communication line opened up to all the individuals here in Acton, that would be much faster and direct. And if it takes the Country Journal maybe running something saying, how would you like to get on an email list we'll use for emergencies? If we had an earthquake here, you know, I don't know if our internet is going on on satellite, but you know, there's there's really no way for everyone to get in contact with each other. That's something that I've noticed, and I think we really need to work on. We've been in this community now for 15 years, and I um, have seen it change and almost change for the worse. 
and I worked very hard to bring it back from what I perceive to be the precipice of, of, of significant urbanization in our community. And we are now far back from that, which is wonderful. Um, but I, I, I want to preserve it for at least another 50 years, because I plan to live here a long, long time. I don't know about the uh, cemetery park, and the uh, ashes in Hawaii maybe would be more of my style, but at any rate, um, thrown into a volcano, but <laughs> anyway. Um, so that's why I would like to be on the town council, because I believe I can really bring a lot of the, uh, a, a lot of force to bear on some of these things that are facing our community, and could destroy our community if we're not careful. So, Tom Costin. Uh, I, say, I, I take this responsibility very seriously, and just preparing for this, I have a good idea for how much effort this is going to take, and it's going to be a lot. I mean, there's going to be a lot asked of us. But so, just a quick from what I've heard tonight, and just some notes that I made. Um, Sierra Highway. If you want to know what happens if it gets commercialized, just drive down the Canyon Country, past the signal. You'll see exactly what we're looking at. Um, you won't find these sheep walking around in an SCA and acting. They will, they will not be allowed. Uh, rural community, it means a complete community. And we have that right now. I think we need to preserve it. The high-speed train, we need to just understand it's going to happen, and we need to be prepared with the best possible plan to mitigate its effects on us. Um, elected officials, that's what we are. Uh, they're elected for their positions. And I think honesty and being clear on personal positions is very important. It doesn't mean you use your personal position, it means you listen and you make sure people know where you come from because that way there's no question. <laughs> to the table. Um, I don't know if anyone else has the skill sets that I have and um, you know as far as time I'm self-employed I can fire myself anytime I want take a week off I can take a year off on time I've, I've got the ability to do that I can fire myself back when I need to but um, it, it is going to take a lot of time I think it needs someone with a cool level head that can read through things and as far as the support team Pam and Jackie who I've now worked for about four months are phenomenal. So I would definitely support them also for the town council. Dorothy Daniels. I realize the amount of work I sit on uh, county boards as it is right now. Um, I'm willing to put in the work. As I've told you already, my passion is community. So I see myself um, spending a lot of time doing PR. It's what I do professionally. I work in public relations. I work with nonprofits. I work with school districts. And what I see is that this community is small, and yet it has a lot of pockets. And a lot of the pockets don't talk to the other pockets. And I really see that there's a real need for bringing in that communication so that we can all kind of have the joy of this community together. My one. I served on the uh, Acting Town Council for four years. Um, been a pleasure. I enjoyed uh, working with all the people that's been on the council and gone through the, all the years, seeing a lot of faces come and go. And uh, sure, sometimes we get our little Donnie Brooks going, but uh, you're going to have that no matter where you go. I see a lot of that in, in my home. Uh, my wife has a little hate relation. She loves to hate me. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I, I wanted to continue working here for the city council and uh, with everybody's support. I would, uh, would appreciate your help. Thank you. Tammy Forsland. Well, I've enjoyed being on the town council for the four months that I had. I think because I am retired and I have time, I can do a lot more than some who have full time and they do Friday jobs. I was able to go out and talk to Starbucks. I was able to meet other people and talk about what was going on in the town. I've, I've always been pretty fair-minded. I listen to what everybody has to say and I make my conclusion from that. I do not falsify anything about other people. I do not go off on tangents or try not to. My whole thing is, is that I'm willing to put in the work. I think I kind of even out the board. Um, I'm, 
I'm not very good at talking in front of people, and everybody knows that knows me. I've been pet coaching pageant girls for years, so how they do all these impromptu questions, I have no idea. <laughs> I get very nervous talking to people. I, uh, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. A lot of people ask me, you know, why do I live out in acting? And it's a lot of the stuff that we talked about today. Uh, I always tell them, hey, the city looks great in the rearview mirror. You know, I like it out here. The, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm a law-abiding citizen most of the time. <laughs> there are things that I do stand up for, and I don't mind uh, the consequences a lot of times of what I say whether it be the fire chief of L.A. City, when I basically called him a liar one night in a couple, in a forum, I figured the next day I'm going to be working down in Long Beach somewhere. Didn't happen. My next big thing that I see coming up is the high-speed rail. I, I really admire the people of Marietta who stood in front of the buses uh, and made the buses turn around. They did not want that to be in Marietta, so they turned them around. Maybe that's what's going to happen here when the high-speed rail comes through. Come on. Catherine Skytecker. Oh, I wanted to thank everybody and all the panel for listening to all of our comments and you know, trying to get a feel for who we are. Um, I think we all, including myself, we, we love acting. We love our lifestyle. We want to try and preserve it. And when we talk to the regulators and people in, in planning, regional planning, they listen to acting. They listen to Jackie. They listen to our comments. So we do make a difference, and it takes a lot of work, but it's all worth it. So I want to continue doing that for the community. Pam Walter? Okay, Tippy recently asked me if I was going to lay down in front of the train with her. So that just brought that to mind when Fred said that. Uh, no, I'm not. <laughs> little body away from the train and not let her get run over either. Um, I'm very passionate about the high-speed rail, as you all know, and my closing comment, what I wrote before, is it takes a community of like-minded, thinking people who are willing to step out of their comfort zones to protect what Acton has and is. I'm stepping out of my comfort zone. I can't even imagine what I've had to do with Kim for the last years learning about this. I, I didn't want to learn that. I didn't want to read it. I was bored out of my ever-loving mind <laughs> most of the time. But now I can talk to the high-speed rail and, you know, they, they call me and they ask to set up a meeting. They do their thing. So they do respect us. They don't like us. <laughs>